Folks, welcome back to the channel. Let's just jump straight into this one. It's a USTC update and it's realistically what you're all kind of hunting around for, what you want to know the most about. And things can seem quite confusing. As you can see from the comments, people are kind of like, can you actually simplify this? It kind of tells the story itself. You can do a few like, you know, Google searches. You could jump into the documentation on the glossary. You could search some of the references in there. But I'm here to try and break this down as best as I can and try to give an opinion on it as to, you know, what realistically could be the issue, right? What this is, is a list of all the exchanges that they're trying to contact to more or less get this incremental repeg, not only on chain, but off chain. And I think the team themselves, they, they deem this as quite important because they feel like they'll have a much better shot if they can launch it on and off chain. Um, my subtle opinion is with something like this, you should, you should kind of start small, but you know, I'm not a quant developer. I just can only give my sort of opinion. I would prefer to see something like this start small, like I was saying in a test environment, moving to maybe an on-chain test, then moving to an on-chain system that's actually implemented and then further pushing that forward and kind of not only going for an incremental repeg, but going for an incremental step-by-step -step plan and process as to going forward with this, because we can see we've got no, no initial responses from Astroport, OKX, and SuperX. Uh, TerraSwap is, has an issue with currently running V2 liquidity mod model, which would support the repeg initiative. You've got Uniswap V2, Uniswap VT, uh, VT, V3, uh, implementation subject to governance. So pretty much if we pass it, they'll do it. it. You know, Uniswap is like pancake swap. Jesus, they'll list any kind of shit coin under the sun. It doesn't matter. They'll list it. MEXC initial discussions ongoing. This is good because MEXC have always kind of like dipped their toe first, even though they've never committed fully to like burning. They were kind of the ones dipping their toe first. So it's good to see an exchange like this coming forward and seeing that there is a discussion ongoing and not seeing that, oh, we have made contact, like you can see with Binance, KuCoin, um, but there are issues and they're awaiting further responses or there's issues with the algorithm, it not matching their engine and their developments they've got. What this is all actually going to come down to is manpower. If you look at anything in the world, if you look at your job, if you're a data analyst, right, you're paid to analyze data. Okay, you're paid to analyze data, not data that you want to analyze, but data that the company has been paid to analyze, to provide a service, right? And it's everything deems manpower. It, nothing's ever automated. And this is just simply getting CEXs off of their lazy backsides to implement something where, yes, they're going to have to make some changes, but this could be a guaranteed route to not only success, but a lot of liquidity for these CEXs and they're they're very greedy. We know that from Binance just listing Pepe, it absolutely crashing. And it's funny because all of the people that bought it on Binance are likely now holding the bag. And that's kind of the way these things work. But seeing that Redline Drifter is in direct lines of communication, is attempting to open them where he can and wherever he can. This is great. This is what we want to see because the one thing I will always respect, right, is governance. And this is passed. The team's passed. All right. We have to respect governance now, even if there's bad actors in it, people that we don't like, whatever. We have to respect it. And we're a community and we must support this initiative wherever and whenever we can. I think there's going to become a time when we need to start to develop more hashtags, get more on top of it uh, in that polite manner, this really kind of collective manner of not demanding something, but simply raising awareness to what we're doing, because there's nothing bad about that. It's not like we're boycotting or we're sabotaging or we're like throwing it in their faces. We're simply showing them what's going on. And I think this is a huge milestone for us alongside, hopefully moving to our own infrastructure. Alongside that, I'm going to be doing a video later today, diving into these two curveballs, by the way. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot going on, right? And we need to support this as best as, as we can, like I was saying. And 
getting the exchanges to get off their backsides is not going to be easy and the likelihood is they're going to want to see those test environments and what is something like these CEX is really going to want? Well, they're going to want us to have like working systems and everything to be in a point of control via governance, a really safe method because it's not, it's not hard for somebody to do what has already been done by manipulating that market module again and there's already people who want to revive Anchor Protocol and it's like the dangers are out there. It's been proven that Anchor led to the crash and it was a utilized tool. And people are, you know, it's, we've got to consistently raise awareness for these certain things. But what we're seeing here is these lines of communication at a point now where the CEX is a 100% always going to come back with, we need data, we need simulations, we need proof of concept, we need to see that you've got the module working, we need a repository. There's all these things and I think the quant team are so knuckled down at the moment, they've been paid their first payout of money, they've got a point to prove right now and, and honestly like I've said with things like Terraport recently, I hope I, I'm wrong and people do change right and these people who had been bad actors have now sort of found this niche where they feel like they fit in and they've got a place and maybe they feel more invested in this community and hopefully all of these kind of things are wrong and this thing goes as best as it can and a lot of people are sitting there saying you know what's the market module what is the incremental repeg and I think if you just type market module you know, it, it, it will tell you everything you need to know you can tap see results and you can find out everything about it and i think a lot of the stuff in here is actually explaining specifically that there is no market module and it will fail and this is because all of these stable quants which are all of those other little stable coins that you do get right the market module itself was what led to the crash okay it's the swapping system between ustc and lunc and all of the other coins <clears throat> when you swap coins, it's always been through like Astroport, TerraSwap, something like that. It's the market module can be, it could be, I think the best way to say this is it could be a nuclear power station or it could be an atom bomb. It's one of those ones where it's a dual use case. It, it could be really good or it could be really bad depending on how we approach this. The market module itself was specifically destroyed. If everybody remembers, um, and if you don't remember, the only thing that Terra Rebels actually did was turn back on a system um, that was switched off. And so more or less, they they wrote some lines of code, um, put that forward, TFL merged it, and it all got switched back on. It really was as simple as that. We switched the validators on at a certain point later, and it was more or less just turning switches back on, just turning a tap back on. And this isn't going to be turning a tap back on. If we turn this thing straight back on, right? It's going to go into hyper minting again. What's going to happen? Well, it's going to mint a ton load of Luna Classic in an attempt to try and repeg USTC. And that's not what we want. What we needed to do, we needed to do it in incremental steps. What does that specifically mean? Well, if we look at the word incremental, we look at what it actually means. It, it's relating to or denoting an increase or addition, especially one of a series on a fixed scale. So for example, we would make it in step so we would go 0 0.01 we would hold there to a point of where the system says to itself i have enough liquidity i'm worth this much i can move up again and we do it step by step but the issue with this is it can go up it can go down the even bigger thing that everybody's going to have to understand is there's probably going to be a lot of pain before there's going to be a lot of pleasure because it's going to have to find a peg it's going to have to hunt for its peg when we when we when this whole thing finally converges and meets and the repeg actually begins it's probably going to have a peg level a lot lower than it is now is that something that we should be concerned about no of course not because this is what we signed up for right an incremental step by step repeg that does it carefully and th this is like with all of the stuff about the test data and all these other things I think it's really good. I think the team are doing, like I said, what they should be doing. They've been paid a lot of money. They've got points to prove. Hopefully, 
we're going to see in a few weeks that this list is at a point where it's saying implementation, uh, sorry, implementation subject to governance. That's what we really want to see. Hopefully, with everything that's going on, this is going to go off without a hitch because we really need it to go off without a hitch up until the point of that repeg because everybody's going to be very unhappy that the price has dropped drastically on USTC. In the best case scenario, we get a good support level when it's it's kind of actually up higher than what we thought. But, you know, let me know what you folks think about all of this. Let me know if there's things that you don't understand currently in our sector. Let me know if there's things that you want covered. Just let me know in the comment section. And I'm trolling through all the time. I know I don't get time to reply. It's really a complex thing where you reply to one person, you feel like you've got to reply to everybody else. I just, I've got not enough time in a day, but I'm trying my utmost best to just get as much as I can done. Folks, have a really nice day. A few more videos coming today. Like I said, a step up in the comment. Stay safe, stay humble, stay aware. None of this is financial advice. Be aware of the cameras. Be aware of doppelgangers. Be aware of anybody pretending to be me. And I'll catch you in the next one. Ciao.